Let's, let's catch up on the latest from Israel. He's over there. He was with us last week from London. Now he is in Israel itself. Uh, eight days since Hamas's brutal surprise attack and the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, have begun their offensive in their mission to save the hostages and to basically put an end to Hamas, which is like putting an end to ISIS. British Commander Richard Kemp, Colonel, how are you? What's happening in Tel Aviv? When are they going to attack or have the attacks already started? Uh, I'm, I'm very well, thank you, Rowan. I hope you and your team are there as well and, of course, all your viewers down under. Um, I, I've been up in the north today in the, uh, on the border with Lebanon where it's beginning to hot up there as well and Hezbollah have attempted infiltrations today in the place I was and also firing rockets. Uh, and, and I, you know, the IDF have got a very close eye on what's going on there because it may well be that they're forced into a two-front war. And that, of course, is why the U.S. have put aircraft carriers up in the eastern Mediterranean to deter Hezbollah from attacking from the north. But down in Gaza, I was there yesterday as well on the Gaza border. And again, things are intensifying there. The, the IDF have begun their obviously a number of days ago, began their air attacks against Hamas terrorists. Um, they carried out a, a couple of short, sharp raids into Gaza by, with tanks and infantry the day before yesterday. Uh, and, and they're gearing up on the border to perhaps launch a large-scale ground offensive into Gaza. And I was talking to some soldiers down there who are ready to go. They're a bit apprehensive, of course, as Every soldier would be in that situation. They're going to face a tough fight if they go in, but they're also ready to go in to prevent Hamas from firing rockets, continuing to fire rockets into Israel, and, of course, from repeating the horrific slaughter that took place last weekend. James. Colonel Kemp, I mean, obviously the prospect of going into Gaza and doing a block-by-block -block clearance of Hamas from there is a terrifying prospect in some ways, but you mentioned the U.S., uh, and their aircraft carrier and putting in, you know, their influence to try and keep things from developing worse. But what is the U.S. doing when they're putting an aircraft carrier in the Eastern Med on the one hand and yet still not doing anything about Iran, which is the real cause of all of Hamas's uh, strength and power, and not even clawing back the $6 billion in funds that they released to them? I mean, isn't the Biden administration being really two-faced about this? Well, actually, um, unless I'm wrong, I believe they have reversed the decision to release the $6 billion of funds to Iran as a direct result of this operation. I, I certainly was, that was my understanding. So, yes, okay. but I mean, I think, I think Biden helped to provoke this situation by, um, by effectively appeasing Iran. And of course, Iran is right behind this war. They funded Hamas, they armed Hamas, Islamic Jihad as well, and Hezbollah. Um, and and they, they were given encouragement and strength by U.S. appeasement. But I think the U.S. so far have been pretty much four square behind Israel on this, on this occasion. Uh, but of course, you're absolutely right that Iran has to be dealt with. It's not just a question of, of withholding those funds, if that's what's happened, but it's a question of, of I believe, taking distinct action against Iran um, whether it's during the course of this conflict or later. Rita. What, is, what has become of the hostages? There were reports that they were, there were some hostages who were found dead in Gaza, but there was over 100 taken. Uh, what, what do we know about efforts to, to find them? Yeah, there's about 120 or thereabouts. I'm not sure anyone's got an exact figure of hostages, men, women children, babies, old people taken, dragged across the border, sometimes by the hair. And when they got into Gaza, in many cases, they were spat at and abused by jubilant crowds coming out onto the street to celebrate Hamas's victory. Um, nobody knows where they are. Well, the IDF is clearly working on that. That's one of their top priorities, IDF and Israeli intelligence, trying to establish exactly where they are. Now, the likelihood is they're going to be dispersed in a number of locations, and the likelihood is they're going to have a gun to their head as well, so that if the IDF do locate them and attempt a rescue operation, they're going to be the first to die. Let's hope they can get all or at least some of them out of there, but it's a very tough ask. And you mentioned bodies having recovered. The IDF, in the raids they carried out on Friday across the border into Gaza, they recovered some 
bodies of people that have been taken across from Israel into the Gaza Strip. So, Richard, we've only got a minute left, but just tell us, what are the big dangers? Obviously, booby traps. How do the IDF, what are the, the soldiers you've spoken to, what are the big challenges logistically of getting into Gaza? Will they find anyone? A million people are being told to, to leave. What are all the logistics they have to deal with, Richard? Well, as you rightly say, ambushes, booby traps, snipers, ambush positions. There's going to be there are, the whole place is crisscrossed with attack tunnels from, so that the terrorists can get into the tunnels and then get behind advancing IDF forces and attack them from behind. It's a very, very tough situation, particularly if and when they get into the, the cities inside Gaza. Um, they, you know, I think that the, the idea of the, or the Israeli government is not going to send them in unless they absolutely have to. But of course, there's only so much you can do from the air. I think at the point that the Israeli Air Force commanders decide they've dealt with all the terrorist targets they can from the air, that will be the time for the IDF to go in on the ground. And let's face it, once they're in there, they could be in there for a long time. And the reason I say that is because Hamas governs Gaza. The IDF have, have declared they're going to destroy Hamas in Gaza, whether by killing them or driving them out. And that leaves a vacuum, and it may have to be filled by an IDF government inside Gaza for a period of time. Colonel Richard Kemp, uh, stay safe there, uh, and uh, thanks for those insights, and we'll chat to you again soon. Thank you, Richard Kemp.